Welcome to tonight's prayer meeting. I am so glad to be back with you. I am glad that Brother Scott and Brother Lindell could do such wonderful jobs in my absence. Uh, I, I participated in prayer right along with you, even while I was on vacation, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed the, the, the way that both led the prayer meetings respectively. Uh, I must confess that I don't play the guitar, although I did take lessons. Evidently, you're supposed to practice. And I don't play the piano, so I, I'm not going to sing um, any of that, but I do appreciate what they did. I, I just thought they were wonderful. I wanted us tonight to just talk for a few moments um, about the, the confidence we have in God. You may be like a lot of people right now, and and there, there's some confusion. There's, there's a bit of fear associated with where we are right now as a nation. It wasn't that long ago that people in authority were promising that the COVID virus would disappear because of the summer heat, that we would be back to normal. We were operating on that basis. We were hopeful of that very thing, but but obviously that's not the case. In fact, numbers continue to climb and currently we're under a mask mandate. Uh, not just businesses and employees, but, but even we uh, as citizens, as we go out in public, we're, um, we're, we're mandated to wear masks and, and, and numbers are, are, are still high. Uh, we see bright spots here or there, but, but as a trend, things are not good. And uh, there's a lot of misinformation, and, and I want to say disinformation. There are people who are purposefully spreading uh, information that is not helpful. Uh, so so it's, it's hard to know what our attitude should be right now, what our feelings should be right now about what's happening in the world. I was really encouraged yesterday as we laid to rest Miss Louise Tucker. And, and what I was encouraged by was her favorite Bible verse or passage. Um, it's Isaiah 41, verses 9 and 10. But it's verse 10 that I want us to think on tonight because as I prepared to speak over her, um, over her body and, and at her service, I, I, was, I was just so encouraged by the Word of God. And I think that you will be encouraged as well. God was speaking to Israel through his prophet Isaiah, and he said to them, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Don't look around with confusion and bewilderment. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. These are some powerful words. There are two commands, and with all of God's commands, he has his reasons. Often, we don't know what those reasons are. He just says, do it, and out of obedience and trust, we are to do it. But interestingly, here in Isaiah 41, not only does God give two commands, but he gives five reasons why we should obey those commands. The first command is to fear not. Do not be afraid. And he gives one reason why that we should not fear. You know what that reason is? For I am with you. What we learn in, in our frightening moments is that no matter what we are facing, the Lord's presence is enough. If we will just lean into his presence, we'll find his presence to be enough. Don't fear, for I am with you. Those words actually remind me of, of um, Psalm 23, verse 4, where David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will, what? Fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And so as long as the Lord is with us, we have absolutely nothing to fear. 
But there's a second command, and he gives four reasons why we should obey this command. Because he says, be not dismayed. Literally, uh, the command is, don't look around with anxiety and confusion. It's, it's this idea of someone who's not sure of, of what's going on. And so just, you know, kind of checking out every vantage point, every angle. And he says, be not dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Don't be confused. Don't, don't be anxious. But it's literally don't look around with anxiety and confusion. I'll just be honest with you. I hope that you know I'm always honest with you. Why do we say that? But anyway, uh, I'll just be honest with you. People of faith are not immune to confusing situations. There is much in this life that we don't understand. There's much in this life that quite honestly, quite frankly, we can't understand. But the Lord gives us four reasons why that we do not have to be dismayed why we don't have to be disheartened or discouraged. First of all, he says, because I am your God. When we don't understand what's going on, when we don't have all the answers, the Lord's not nearly as interested in giving us answers. That's what we're asking for. You know, our first question is why? But the Lord's not nearly as interested in giving us answers as he is in giving us himself. I am your God. And then second, he says, I will strengthen you. We don't have to give over to anxiety because as Psalm 28 verse 7 says, the Lord is my, my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him. And I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song, I will praise him. We've all had those times when we could literally feel our strength slipping away. But the Lord says, don't worry. I will strengthen you. From within, I will give you strength. And then third, he promises. And these are reasons why we don't have to be dismayed. and We should not be dismayed. But third, yes, I will help you. Literally, what that phrase means is I will surround you. I will protect you. I'll, I'll circle the wagons around you. In God's case, I'll circle the angels around you. I will help you. And fourth, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In other words, don't worry about sinking. God's holding you up. If we look at these from a, from a little different perspective, what, what we find is that when the Lord says, I am your God, we can rest in the knowledge that he is over us. And when he says, I am with you, we can rest and be confident that he is beside us. When he says, I will strengthen you, we can rest and be confident that he is within us. And when God says, I will help you, we can be confident. We can rest in the knowledge that he is surrounding us and protecting us, whatever it is that we're facing. And when he says, I will uphold you, we can be confident that he is underneath us, holding us up, supporting us with his righteous right hand. There is much about what's happening in the world right now that we don't know and we don't understand. I know, I know. There, there are people who are, who are confident in their conspiracy theories, but there's much that we don't know. There's much that we are learning, and we don't know what the future looks like. Here we are as pastors trying to plan. You know, we, we strategically plan, and we generally come together uh, in August and September to put our plans on paper and then in September to actually plan out the, the next year. And of course that then merges into the development of a budget and everything to support those plans. But here we are, we, we, we don't know what the future holds. And so we're trying to plan for plan A, plan B, plan C, all of that. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know when things will get back to normal, but I know this, that God has promised all that we need to face uncertain days. 
He has promised, I am your God. He has promised, I am with you. He has promised, I will strengthen you. He has promised, I will help you. He has promised, I will uphold you. And that's all I need to know. I hope that's all that you need to know. And tonight as we pray, let's pray with that foundation, that basis for our faith. Once again, I'm so glad that you've joined us for our prayer meeting. If you're just tuning in to the prayer meeting, um, when you get a chance, check out Isaiah 41, verse 10. I think it'll encourage you. I'm going to voice our prayer, and wherever you are, I hope that you'll lay your petitions before the Lord. But I'll voice the prayer, but let our hearts all come together and pray together. I know we're not under the same roof. We're not in the same room, but our God is the Lord of time and space. He doesn't require those, those, those things. He can bring us together from wherever we are and we can be all on the same page. Let's be on praying ground. Let's pray. Gracious father, thank you so very much for the gift of prayer. We take it for granted oftentimes Lord, we, we often rush right into our days. We often face uh, whatever it is that we're going through, and, and we give it our best shot, but we don't lean on you. We don't depend upon you. And for that, Father, we ask for forgiveness. Lord, we pray that you would wash our hearts clean, clean of our pride, clean of our godlessness, clean of our independence, clean, Lord, of of every miscalculation, every misjudgment, every time that we have set out to do something in our own strength, in our own power, by our own way, by our own judgment, and oftentimes by our own sense of right and wrong. Lord, and, and we, have, we have failed miserably. We have failed. We have sinned against you. And Lord, we ask that you would forgive us. Be merciful toward us as sinners. Lord, thank you for loving us, for being who you are. Lord, we just pause right now to say we praise you, we worship you, we love you. Lord, you are worthy of our worship. We are such unworthy creatures. We don't know why you would give us the attention and the blessings that you do. But tonight, Lord, we just want to say we love you, we trust you, and we thank you. We thank you for your kindness toward us. It speaks of who you are. And there is no greater kindness that you show us than the kindness of your forgiveness. That, Lord, you would take hostile actions, hostile against your holiness, and wash them away. As Isaiah says, to put them behind your back. And, Lord, if you're hiding those behind your back, we can't get to them. Lord, thank you for forgiveness. Lord, I, I echo the words of the Apostle Paul when he says he's the chief of all sinners. Lord, that title belongs to me. Maybe it belonged to him then, but Lord, it belongs to me now. And Lord, I am so grateful for your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness, your kindness toward us in all of our failures and our shortcomings. Lord, tonight as we pray, we come from different places, different hearts, different homes. We're not under the same roof. This prayer meeting is not like prayer meetings that, that we are accustomed to and quite honestly would prefer, where we can be on our knees together. We can bow our heads together. We can plead before the throne of God together under the same roof, in the same room. But, but yet, Lord, it's just as real. And we are just as connected as if we were physically in the same space. Lord, prayer is, is a spiritual conversation. And so it makes sense that we could join together spiritually and be just as connected. But Father, we come into your presence to plead the blood of Jesus upon our lives and upon our, our needs, our situations. And certainly at the forefront of 
of our requests, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus against COVID-19. Lord, we, we plead the blood of Jesus against the transmission and spread of this virus. Lord, what I'm trying to say is we're asking for you to do something supernatural. Lord, we're coming to discover that we as people, we as American citizens, we're, 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 we're not always trustworthy to do the right thing. When we are mandated to do something, we might be more likely to do it. But left unto ourselves, Lord, we are selfish creatures, turned in upon ourselves and, and, and giving very little thought to those who are around us and beyond us. And so, Lord, as, as we try to slow the spread of this virus, Lord, we're finding little success. And in the, in the midst of our human efforts, there are conspiracy theories and there's misinformation, there's disinformation. And Lord, I, I'm, I would be the first one to say that, that not everything that science tells us is correct because all science can do is to say, this is what we know now. This is what we see now. And so not even science is a final answer. But, but Lord, I, I just pray that in the, the midst of conflicting information, uh, in, the, in the midst of, of chaos and anarchy, uh, Lord, I, 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 I'm asking, Lord, that you would override us that Lord, you would, that you would certainly honor our best efforts, but but Lord, override us, and Lord, do what only you can do. Lord, we 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 are seeing the havoc that this virus is wreaking in our nation and has wreaked around the world. We are seeing that, Lord. We see the threat upon our hospital capacity, the ICU and ventilator capacity. We see that. Lord, we can track those numbers. Lord, we see the, the death numbers and the hospitalization numbers. Lord, we see the positive tests to total test numbers. We see the positive cases to population. Lord, we can track those numbers and, and they're alarming to us. But Father, I, I just pray that you would give us the spirit that Isaiah spoke to Israel to fear not and do not be dismayed. Lord, I pray that we would lay claim to Isaiah 41.10 and that we would not fear. We would not look around with confusion and anxiety, but that we would boldly and confidently follow you and trust you and know, Lord, that you are at work in ways that we often don't understand. But we don't have to understand because you are over us and beside us and within us. Lord, you are, are beneath us. Lord, you are surrounding us. Lord, so we don't have to know how. We don't have to know when. We don't have to know the details. All we need to know is that you are our God. And you are with us. And you strengthen us. And you help us. And you uphold us. Lord, these, these promises are enough. And so, Lord, in, in the midst of uncertainty, Lord, give us faith. Give us hope. Lord, help us to, to trust you, that you cause all things to work together for good to those who love you, the called according to your purpose. Lord, during these days, when our schedules are upended and disrupted, Lord, when church schedules have been completely rearranged, our family schedules thrown into chaos, Lord, may we not lose sight of our mission as your people. Lord, there are still lost people who are going to go to hell if they die without Jesus. 
there are still physical and tangible, spiritual, the intangible, tangible, intangible needs in our communities, our neighbors. And so, Lord, help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Help us, Lord, to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Lord, I pray that we would not lose sight of our mission to make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that you have commanded us. And Lord, let us not forget the last part of that, that you are with us even unto the end of the age, the end of the world. And so, Lord, we need not fear. We need not be dismayed. We put all of our faith and our trust in you. And, Lord, we know that you are at work in ways that we can't see and perhaps we'll never know. But, Lord, may we be found faithful. Give us, Lord, wisdom as we face these uncertain days. So much about what's happening we've never faced before. But, Lord, I pray that we would be wise in our efforts. May we be kind. May we be gracious. May we be compassionate and understanding, especially with those who may disagree with us or differ with us on certain things. Lord, we can disagree without being disagreeable. Lord, I, I, I pray that, that we would Love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. Knowing, Lord, that it wasn't that long ago that we were your enemies, and yet you opened wide the doors to heaven. You opened wide your arms and your heart, and you welcomed us into your family. You've called us your friends, not just your servants, but your friends. And so, Lord, I pray that we might extend that same gracious, kind hospitality to those in the world that might call themselves our enemies. Maybe we would call them our enemies. But Lord, may we have your heart. May we have the mind of Christ in all things. May we think Christianly in all things. Help us, Lord, to do that for the sake of the gospel and in the name of Jesus. It is in that name that we pray this prayer. We offer this petition. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you so very much for being a part of this prayer meeting. I do look forward to the day that we can come back together and perhaps that'll be soon, but we, we just don't know yet. But we, we do want to pray for one another, remember one another. Um, roughly half of our, our church folk are coming back to gather publicly, but that means that about half of you are, uh, are not yet ready to gather in a public setting. And we respect that. We uh, simply encourage you to not grow weary and well-doing. Statistics tell us that roughly a third of active church members have completely disengaged from their churches during COVID. That is a terribly sad statistic. I hope that is not you. I, I don't think it would be if you're joining us in prayer. But maybe you know somebody who ha has, has just disconnected. Maybe you could be that bridge to bring them back into the fellowship, bring them back into not just the church fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ, but to, to bring them back into fellowship with God. Uh, so, so reach out to your friends, reach out to your family members, your neighbors, maybe your life group members or, or the person that you remember sitting on the pew with every Sunday. Maybe reach out to them, check on them and see if they're all right. And if there are needs that, that we need to be made aware of, please don't hesitate to let us know those things. I want to tell you I love you. I miss you something terrible. But I love you, and I look forward 
just as you do to the day that we can get back together, reconnect, hug one another, all in the name of Jesus. You know I'm not even really a hugger, but I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to that day that we can give one another hugs in the name of Jesus. But until that day, let's keep on keeping on. I love you. God bless you. See you this weekend, maybe.